I break my wrist. Yes, when I, I, you know, and I sang this song during that time when my, after I had my surgery on my wrist and everything. But during that time, you know, I felt so helpless. I was playing keyboard, keyboard at a church, and I break my wrist, and I couldn't do that. So I was doing whatever I could still do. But I'm telling you what, it, if you are used to seeing which this blind man, you know, he was in a world that was dark. He couldn't see anything. So imagine if you shut your eye and you don't see anything, if you don't hear anything, you just feel like you're a person just lost out there somewhere. You know, if there's no, nobody around to help you, but with just my wrist and not being able to use that one arm, it was like I was so frustrated. And, I, and, I, and I'm telling you what, I felt so helpless. And I was constantly saying, Help me, <laughs> you know, will somebody please help me, you know, because I would really need some help because I didn't have that arm that I could use it. Amen. And, I, you know, I was getting very aggravated, so I couldn't even imagine uh, somebody that was blind and they couldn't see how to, to be able to fix them something to eat or, Amen. you know, or, or go anywhere unless they had somebody there to help them to get them to where they were going because they couldn't see. And then after Jesus, you know, rubbed the mud in his eyes and then again and tells him to go walking, you know, to the pool and wash his eyes, you know, he still couldn't see. He had mud in his eyes. You know, the, his eyes might have already been open, but there were mud in it. And, you know, he was, but he would obey God and he began to walk and, you know, he couldn't see where that pool was. I mean, I don't remember in the Bible where it said there was anybody got him by the hand and led him to the pool. They just Jesus said, go wash your eyes in the pool today. And, you know, as he walked, he, I don't even know if he knew what direction he was going in. But he was obedient to Jesus, and he went on walking. And I'm sure that every time that he began to walk, he would fall down, and he probably didn't know where he was or have nobody to help him back up. And that's how we are when we're lost out in the world, and you don't know how to get a hold of Jesus. That's You're right. stumbling all over the place right. until Jesus comes to you and opens up your eyes. You know, and, and I think that's a really good illustration, you know, that, you know, that we can stumble, we may fall, but you have to keep trying to get up. And when you get to Jesus, you'll be able to see. Amen. And you'll be able to see what you need to see. You'll be able to get the help that you need. Amen. 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 some things on my mind I struggle through each day I don't want to waste your time but there's a few things I'd like to say I'm sure today you've heard some great prayer but simple words are all I have so here's a few things
Lord said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. And I'm glad that we don't have, I don't have to pray a big eloquent prayer because I don't know those big eloquent words. <laughs> I just talk to God just God, like I talk to y'all. And that's all he wants us to do is just to reach out. I'll send this song out to uh, Sister Geraldine tonight. And she's got, you know, what she's going through. But just know that you are sheltered in the arms of God. No matter what's going on in your life, right. you'll be sheltered in the arms of God. You'll just trust Him. He's been to this church. Yeah. He's been back there at children's church. So he knows who God is. And he talks his way. And we got to pray for him to find his way back. Amen. And I just ask you all, just help me pray for him. Amen. Amen. Amen.
bleed every teardrop that ever fell from my eyes. So I leave God a mountain that I wrong you can't climb. I'll take your burden. I'll make it mine. She tried to help me. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. It's so good to be here tonight. Amen. Amen. I want to go to the Word of God tonight. I started in one chapter today and just ventured over into another one and tied these two stories together. But I think you'll find the story tonight about two men that walked with God. They had power with God. I don't understand all about Samson's life, how he did what he did, but I know that the Bible said the Spirit of the Lord moved on in the time, so it was God that helped him to make all those great feats that he made for the kingdom of God. And then with Peter, he was walking with God, walked with him afar off and got in trouble. Amen. We read these two stories, they're short, I don't think it's about six verses, takes in both stories. Amen. Luke chapter 22, verse 31 and 32. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan have desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And then if you back up the Judges for the Old Testament uh, episode of Samson's life, 16, 19 through 22, and she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict uh, him, and strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep, and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord had departed from him. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes. 
and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass, and he did grind in the prison house. Howbeit the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you for a few minutes. Very serious thing, but I think sometimes we take it light. Sometimes I don't think we realize how close maybe these men were that failed, that got in trouble. And, uh, you know, God only knows where they were at. God only knows where they were at. God only knows where you're at. And I'm not at tonight. But I don't think we should take it light. The Bible said take heed. Uh, he didn't stand to take heed lest he fall. Amen? Amen. So I believe there's a real reason there that you need to be observant. Amen? Uh, I came over here to pray every morning for a week there right after the revival. I felt like that of God too. It was my first week off my job and I could. But every morning when I got up, the news was on. They were telling me about deer has been hit everywhere. Please be careful. Deer is everywhere. It's mating season. And there it was. And I came out this road, it was still dark, and I was, had my eyes out, you know, looking for those deer. I was looking as far as you could look with natural eyes and had my glasses on, and I was really drunk because I didn't want to hear, because I'd been warned. I'd been warned that they're out there, and I've seen cars total off by those things, and even people get hurt or killed. And you've been seeing deer come through the windshield, all the people, and so. Yeah. It's, it's real serious, and I took it serious. So is walking with God. So is walking with God real serious. And if he took the time to say, He that standeth, let take, that him take heed lest he fall. And I believe you're talking to the one that's closest to God. The devil's out there. And I entitled this message not Satan has you marked, your name marked for destruction. That's what he wants to do with your life. He don't make no bones about it. Uh, your adversary, the devil, is walking to and fro throughout the earth, showing himself, trying to, uh, as a roaring lion, uh, to to deceive you and to devour you, amen, yes. and to take you down. And, uh, no one in the scripture of the Lord said, uh, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for this opportunity of prayer. We pray that you touch our hearts tonight, God. God help us with this word. I don't think there's anybody here Right on the verge of backsliding, but I don't know what's listening to me on the live streaming. But I do know that you gave me this message, and maybe for nothing else, just a warning that we would uh, be be brave against all evil. Fight, be brave against all evil. Never run or even lag behind. Keep on the fire line tonight, God. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. And the church says, Amen. Maybe somebody shake hands, something to share this up, Amen. God is so good. Amen. I tell you, he's so good. Hallelujah. Uh, both of these stories in the Bible of where the devil came to destroy two men that God was using uh, have uh, good endings or they have turnarounds at the end of the story that the devil wasn't counting on. I don't believe with all my heart. First, Jesus said to Peter, when thou art converted, I don't know what you get out of that, but that Jesus was telling him, you're going to make it. I'm praying for you. You're going to make it. But when you get converted, not if you get converted, not if you get turned around, but when you get turned around, uh, strengthen your brethren is what he said. And then in the story of Samson, we see the Bible says in the last verse we read in Judges that the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. So we understand that there is sunshine after the rain. After the battle's over, we won't wear a crown. We sing that with amazing grace sometimes. And we do believe that. Amen. Both of these stories had a good ending, meaning that neither man died lost. I don't think they did. There are people that say Samson died lost, but I don't agree with that. I believe he was willing to give his life to save it. Amen. And, I, you know, that's not worth arguing about. We'll find out when we get there. Samson's there. Amen. Amen. But I, that's what I believe. I think they have good evening. Neither man died lost, which was Satan's intention all along to take them out. Amen. Just like he's got you. You know, uh, I don't watch a lot of it anymore, but I have spent some time in my lifetime watching television. And, you know, when they find the, the culprit or the guy that's doing all the trouble, they find people's pictures all over his wall where he had them as targets, you know, that he was drawing on their face and stuff, making them their target. I believe in hell the devil's got my face, amen. 
He'd like to have my body. He's not going to have it. I don't yes, know if that's real or true. But I just feel like I'm ever on his mind along Amen. with millions of others that he wants to take out. Amen. He wants to take you out. And I believe with God's help, he's not going to do that. Uh, when the Bible says in 1 Chronicles 16 and 22, Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Satan either didn't listen or he don't obey. Amen. <laughs> because he tried to attack the Bible. Said Jesus had him paid a long time ago. And he said, for the elect's sake, he, he will come after the very one that's closest to God. Unfortunately, trouble is a part of our life. Amen. Everyday life. If you're here today, you don't have any troubles. I, I want to tell you, just keep living. Because trouble is going to find you. Amen. It is there. Job said, man, more than a woman a few days and full of trouble. Amen. So we're going to have them. You can move from one house to the other. You can move from one state to the other. You can go from church to church. And you can move from country to country country to try to avoid this uh, trouble. But without an invitation, without you asking him to come, here comes trouble. Uh, you don't have to do anything to get it. Amen. These men... Both of them did things or, or went slack on some things they should have done and to get there. But you and I address, I put our pants on every day and we get dressed every day as <coughs> humans and we make some mistakes along the way today. Aren't you glad God forgives? Oh, Amen. yes, yes. I'm so glad he does. Amen. Uh, Job said in Job 3 and 26, For the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is coming to me. I was not in safety, neither had I rest, yet trouble came. Amen. Trouble will come. And Job was a good one to tell us that. Amen. You can be minding your own business and thinking that everything is just fine. And just like a blindsided accident, you find yourself right in the middle of trouble sometimes. Somebody hear me. Like these men did. Yes, we all have troubles. Well, not only that, but we will all go to a place and, or have been to a place where we wondered, how did we get in this mess? How did we ever get here? Most of the time, we can look back and see where we veered off track. We can see where we got slack uh, concerning the, the Word of God and things He wants us to do. Amen. You know, life sometimes seems so unfair. I think it does. I mean, uh, we, even as Christians and church folk, try to make good decisions, try to live right, and strive to willfully to be in the will of God. And it seems so unfair that God would even allow these things to happen to us, to the natural mind. But let me tell you, sometimes our setback is a setup for our comeback. Amen. You hear what I'm saying tonight? Amen. Our setback that we have so often in life, you know, getting along good and all of a sudden we go back. You know, getting along good and we have to back up a little bit. Our setback could be a setup for our comeback, for us to get stronger with God than we've ever been. If Peter had had Satan's attack, if Peter had not had Satan's attack on him and wept bitterly to get back to God, his comeback, uh, and made his comeback, he could have never been used as mildly as he was by God. Uh, case in point, you know, uh, on the day of Pentecost, he stood up and preached that powerful message, and then uh, you know, a uh, shadow passing over people that got healed. He really knew how to get close to God, but he also knew how to walk away from God, and he did that, and God don't hold it against him. We shouldn't. Jesus said these examples, these stories were put in the Bible for our example, that we can say, Lord, Peter got in trouble when he followed you afar off. Samson got in trouble when he looked at the world too much, when he looked at the things that wasn't supposed to have and things that wasn't supposed to be. And, and we can learn from that. We can say, God, I, I want to stay as close to you as I can. I don't want to follow you far off. I want to be in tune with you. Take every step. And then the, the song that they used to sing says, every move I make, I'm making you Jesus. Every step I take, I take in you Jesus. That's the way it ought to be. Amen. Because we found out a long time ago we can't even walk with that and hold your hand. No way. Somebody hear me today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 As for Samson, I really don't know, but just maybe he was never going to change. You know, he seemed to have that problem with those strange women and, and all the things he'd do, go to his mom and daddy and tell them what all he wanted. It was all earthly-minded, but 
Yet God was still using him because his mother had raised him right. Never let him raise her. Go on his head. And done all the things he was supposed to do. And I, I really don't know. Maybe he was never one to change. And maybe God refused to let him go out that way. And I do believe with his sacrifice, I believe he ended up right with God. I believe he was willing to lose it all to find everything. Amen. That's how I found everything. I hadn't had to lose my life. But I should be willing to if it came to that. Amen. And for his sake, and ain't going to be with the Lord. Either way, we see it was not over till God said it was over. That's what I want to preach tonight and get in your mind. That it wasn't over till God said it was over. God didn't throw the clay away. Amen. I'm glad he didn't throw the clay away, aren't you? He he, he seen Peter was rough and and the vessel was marred and scarred, but he didn't throw the clay away. Put it back on the potter's wheel one more time, made something out of it. And Samson, the same thing. He just threw his life away. That's what he did. And uh, there ain't many people that don't know many people that have done that. Amen. Most of us know a lot of our families, people that have just thrown their lives away. Amen. Amen. I believe that. Praise the Lord. Uh, either way, I believe they both made it. I think I need to stop right here and tell somebody that's going through trouble that is just about to give up. And I don't know anybody like that, but if you're listening to me tonight, you're here, and you that's you tonight. I believe God gave me this for some reason, to stop right here and tell somebody that's going through trouble, that's just about to give up, uh, that uh, you are being set up by God for good in the end. God's going to work it all out. Amen. 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 Romans 8, 28 said, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Amen. It may not look like it now, but you just have to hold on to God. Set up for something good. Although you can't see it now, you wonder sometimes at my trials. I do. I guess I'm human as you are, and you human as I am. I wonder how in the world is this going to work out for my good? How in the world is God turning turn this around? And I can tell you, after serving God over 50 years, I've uh, been preaching for going on 50 years, I can tell you that God has done that time after time after time. When I could not see how he was going to do it, when I thought there was no way, he led me to a brighter day. Hallelujah, Amen. Jesus. The song says, you're everything I need. Ever since God wrote us in, the devil's been trying to ride us out. Can somebody hear me? Every time, ever since God took uh, the blood and wrote us in, amen, amen, and wrote our names in the land of the life, the devil has said, we'll see about that, and we're going to take him out. But I got too many scriptures that, that lets me keep going and allows me and commands me to keep going, that no weapon formed against me to profit, prosper. Yes. And, uh, you know, that many are the afflictions of the righteous, the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver them from them all. Amen. I promise that. And you are too in God's Word. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you place a special order for something because it is special and different, it usually takes longer. We just got something in the house and the normal was 60 inches. She said, it's going to take a little while. Yours is 63 inches. Well, you know, that's what you always figure. That you got one, it costs a little more, and it costs a little more problem. But I said that, God ain't, ain't, ain't governed by the same rule man, man is. But I still think it's a point of interest tonight. Don't feel discouraged. Don't lose hope because God heard your prayer and you, heaven just hadn't has took your order, and God is custom making a special blessing with your name on it, Amen. a miracle with your name on it. Amen. There's something special Amen. in the making for you, and if you will just stand the test, you know. Uh, I heard Betty say one time that life is tough. It gives the test and then the lesson. In school, we got the lesson and then the test. You know, it seems to be backwards, but that's all right. We get through it, and we realize that when we get through it, God's the one that was holding our hand. And took us care of. But I want to encourage you tonight that uh, we might have a special order before the Lord tonight. That He's working out for your good, and it'll be better than you ever dreamed. Because the Bible said to Him that is able to do above and beyond what we can even ask or think. We, we might have it figured out. God, you just give me a thousand dollars, and you might really need five thousand. God knows what we need. Amen. Amen. God, if you just make me feel better, but you may have a sickness in your body that you don't even know about, that God has to touch. Whatever we need, He can do above and beyond what we ask or think. Amen. 
when you're walking in the will of God, just know your blessing is bigger than your trial. Somebody Amen. hear me. Amen. What you're working for. Amen. Don't doubt in the darkness what God showed you in the light. I said it this morning. Charlie used to sing the song. Mama liked it. There'll be a payday at the end of the road. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. There's an old song in the hymn book. When we came to this church 42 years ago, there was a man that sang this song uh, that said, The toils of the road will then seem as nothing when I get to the end of the way. Amen. I mean, the Bible talks about people seeing the devil and saying, That's what caused me all that trouble. That's what caused me to nearly miss it. That's what caused me to go out on a bend. That's what made me get in so bad a trouble. That, that's nothing. And we'll see him as nothing. When one angel puts him in that pit, somebody Amen. tonight, Amen. I think it's important that you know that. Uh, just maybe like Samson, and you don't even know it, your hair is starting to grow. Amen. Amen. The strength is starting to come back. You feel like your, your life's spent, that you just messed up. Maybe somebody will talk to you on the string and not you messed up, and you can't make it right. I tell people, I've told people this all my ministry life, and I've told people in the hospital before, when I knew in my heart they were dying, a lot of times cancer and different things that I knew that even the doctors had said, and without a miracle, I knew they wouldn't be there the next day when I came back to see them. But I've always told them the same story. God's not through with you or you wouldn't be here. Amen. You may be near death, but you're not dead because God's not through with you. Amen. There's something else for you to do, and God still has his hand on you, and his blessing is bigger than your trial. Amen. A setback is when you get off course, when you lose focus. We've all done that. <clears throat> when you get out of God's will, that is a setback. Anybody ever been there? I've been there. Hey, Amen. I, I just said, I missed it. I've had to tell my wife before, I missed it. I didn't see that. I mean, I just was headlong in what I was doing and just missed that thing that God was trying to show me. Sometimes we just won't listen. Sometimes we won't look at what God is trying to tell us and show us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Samson was lured off course by this woman, Delilah, and because of his weakness and the enemy's craftiness, he is in the middle of a setback when he's there and with his strength gone. When you begin losing control, you know where you've lost control and the things uh, that you used to control are now controlling you. Amen. And you know you've lost it. Amen. Amen. Somebody hear me today. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Judges 16, 21 said, But the Philistines took him. Listen, there was a time in Samson's life when the Philistines, even though they were in great number, were afraid to come against him. Amen. Because he had the power of God in his life. I'm telling you, the devil's afraid of you with the power of God. He ain't afraid of you by yourself. But with the word and the blood, he is afraid of you tonight. The blood of Jesus is against Satan, and you have it covering your life. He knows that. Amen. Don't stop him from trying to lure you away or bring you down. Amen. Praise the Lord. We all need to check ourselves. Look at what is controlling us. Maybe our job. Maybe our children, our spouse. Maybe uh, when you lost control or when you lost control, you might see what you could have done to prevent the setback, it'd be so good to see it up front, wouldn't it? Say, if I just stop doing this, if I start doing this, God turn things around in my life. Yes. Well, not only that, but we must be careful while going through trials and problems that we have and the troubles that are sure to come, not to lose our vision of where we're headed. Amen? Amen. We're headed to, toward home, headed to a better place. The Bible says that the Philistines took him and put out his eyes. Understand that it it is the ultimate plot of the enemy to make you lose your vision. Amen. That's why uh, the Bible tells us where there's no vision, the people perish. Spiritual vision. For the Bible says no vision, the people perish. And there certainly is a lack of vision today. People going to and fro don't seem to have no purpose in their life. Jesus saw them like that when he looked out over the city. And he said, they look like kids playing in the marketplace. Amen. Don't Amen. know where they're going. Just Hop into this song and then this song, jump into this side and into this side, like kids playing. Samson found himself in the arms of trouble, in the times of a low place, the stages of setback. The Bible says, and she, Delilah, made him sleep upon her knees. Some even said that 
he laid his head in her lap, and that really sounds like what he done. While she rubbed his head, I think we need to be careful where we lay our heads, amen, where we uh, put our hope, where we put our rest. I'm sure he thought this was going to be all right. This is probably the prettiest woman he ever saw, and he probably loved her and loved her look more than anything he ever thought of. But he didn't see through it that it was a trick of the devil. And ain't, ain't many times that church people don't get the same trouble because they don't see the trick of the devil. They don't see the Bible said, uh, put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles or the schemes or the tricks of the devil. He has many of them. You know, if you think the little cartoon, when I was a little boy, Channel 9, Joy the Clan had a little uh, cartoon about the uh, the bag of tricks, amen. You ain't seen nothing until you see the Satan's bag of tricks. He's got a full load, amen. And if something don't work on you, he's ready to try something else, to try something else, to try something else. Yes. And we just need to keep holding on to Jesus, the hand that'll never yeah, fail. Amen. And we'll get through all the setbacks, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Some people have laid their heads in strange places and it's caused us to lose vision, caused us to get off course, and ultimately it will cause us to get out of the will of God. The Bible says, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she being, began to afflict him, and strength went from him. Samson was now hopeless. That's the way the devil wants to get you and me. Amen. When, the, when the Peter was uh, even swearing and saying, I, I don't know them, I haven't been part of that, I'm nothing. You know, all the time the devil was just pushing him down, 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 till he got out uh, in the courtyard and he saw Jesus and he remembered his words. Amen. Amen. Satan's trying to get you. Amen. Some people don't want to hear that. I mean, I, I, it ain't the best news you ever heard. It ain't the preaching message that gets you stand up and run in the aisle. But I'm telling you, it's the truth. If people don't know that the enemy's out there, then they don't pay no attention to it. Amen. They got to realize that he's there and he's out to get you on every turn. Yeah. But the blood of Jesus is against the devil. Amen. You keep that blood covered. You could be like the little boy and say, Father, you look one more time. See if the blood's still there. The blood's still there through the rain and wind. It still remains. Amen. Yes. Through the storms of life, the trials of love, life, the blood is still there. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Samson now hopeless and helpless. Not hopeless because he had God, but, but to him it was hopeless. He went as far as he could go. There wasn't nothing else he could do. Amen. Adam and Eve's final answer to God was simply three words. I did eat. Adam, Eve blamed the devil. Amen. Adam blamed the woman that God gave him, tried to make God ancestry to the crown. You know? And the woman that you gave me, give it to me. But both of them ended with the same three words, and I, four words, and I did eat. Amen. I did eat those three words. Amen. But because of Samson's setback, because of his detour, the Bible says that the Lord departed from him. And how many know that when you step out of his will, you step out from under his covering. Amen. Amen. You walk away from God. A lady come here, and I know she was of a different faith, but she was singing one night, and, uh, you know, she said, because he said he never read, and she had her reasons for saying what she said, but I sat right there, and I didn't agree with it. I felt like it was cold water in my face when she said, I walked away from God for 10 years, and I knew her life story. She went back to singing country music and, and in bars and stuff like that, and then she got back out to God and got back in church where she was supposed to be, and thank God for it. But she said, for 10 years, I took God places that I should have never took him. I said, no, you didn't. Uh -huh. No, you didn't. Amen. When you walk away from God, you leave God. Amen. Yeah. Not that his presence is not everywhere, but you ain't going to drag God into the beer joints and slums of this life. No, Somebody sir. No, it's sir. It's not going to happen. You get out there by yourself. You want to go on out there? You go on out there, and you'll, you'll feel how bad it feels to be without presence of God in your life. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You step out of his wheel, you step out of his country. You step out from the shadow of the Almighty. The Bible says, I'm about through, the Bible says, uh, 
he went, he was sent to prison to grind in the mill, which was the work at that time for slaves and workers. This shows his character. Uh, instead of being the feared man of God, now he was a prisoner and slave. I mean, his character was reduced down to nothing. Amen. Praise the Lord. So here we have Samson's blind. The strength that used to make him famous is now gone. He's in prison. Amen. Uh, among the low lives, among people that have given up on life and given up on surviving, the worst of all, a lot have given up on God. The Bible says it came to pass when the Philistines heard they were married. They, they said, call for Samson. Let's make sport of him. We want to make fun of him. They called for Samson out of the prison house. Samson said in the lad that held him by the hand, told him, put my hands that I may feel the pillars where under the house standeth that I may uh, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, the Bible said, making a mockery of Samson. And God, all the lords of the Philistines were there, uh, influential people of that day. There were people on the roof, about 3,000 total men and women, and they all looked and made fun of Samson. I believe that Samson came to himself just like the prodigal son did, and, and he thought about the time that he ripped the lion in two with his bare hand. He thought about the time that he slew a thousand men with a jawbone of an ass, and how he got water from the same jawbone miraculously. And while he was reminiscing, he may have felt, I don't know that he did. This is not in the Bible, but the Bible said how he hit the hair of his head began to grow. I don't know how fast that had grown or how much it grown, but when I'm studying today, I thought maybe he felt it down his neck. Maybe he just felt some hair that started growing. I don't know. I felt the presence of God in different ways before, never like that. But, you know, God has his way of letting you feel that I'm with you. Go ahead. It's all right. I got you covered. Somebody yeah, that's right. Amen. Aren't you glad of that? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says it sounds to begin to call on the Lord. Ain't it a good thing when you're down and out? Everybody's giving up on you. You can call on the Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. But Samson said, oh, Lord, God, remember me. You see, he asked God to remember him because he'd gotten out of the will of God. He took himself out of the, the forefront of God. So he said, God, like you worked with somebody 20 years ago. He said, you remember me? And he said, I'm a God never forgets you. Don't, don't get to thinking that way. God don't forget you. But Samson probably felt like he did. He's forgot about me. Remember me, Lord. Remember me one more time. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because he got out of the will of God. He said, I pray that he strengthen me only this once, oh God, that I may be once avenged of the Philistine. At about that time, I think the Holy Ghost showed up. I think God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost has always been. And I think, you know, when the fourth man was walking in the fire and when the uh, angel come down and shut the mouths of the lion. I believe the Holy Ghost is all through the Bible. I do. I believe His presence is there uh, when we get in trouble. And I believe He showed up about this time. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars on the house stood, one with his right hand, the other with his left. The Bible said. And Samson said, "Let me die with the pillars." And he bowed himself with all his mind, and the house fell upon his enemies. God will bring the house down on the enemies. Yes. Sometimes we almost lose our way. We, we get lost in the in the shuffle, whatever how you want to say it. We, we get out of the will of God and we get back to the will of God. Uh, some people don't like to hear you say this because Jesus paid the price, his precious blood. I'm going to quote it. Amen. Jesus paid the price, his precious blood. But sometimes you don't want to pay what's required of you to get back where you ought to be with God, who you once was with God. And sometimes there is a price to be paid to get back in the center of the will of God. Uh, I've talked to a lot of preachers, some of them uh, backslid, have run off with somebody in the church, took money out of the church, some of them I know personally, and failed God. And the biggest problem they had is to thank God they ever take them back because they had been so little. I think when you step behind the pulpit, you step in a different arena you got to realize the devil's already had you marked, but he's really got you in his targets now. Amen? Amen. And he's coming against you because you're coming against him by preaching the gospel. Amen? Yes. You, know, you might be down right now. 
and you might just feel like you're down and you're out and you don't know how to get back up. Maybe you felt like the commercial on TV, not making any fun, you fall, I don't know how to get up. Well, I'm telling you, I don't know how to help them people up, but I know how to help you up tonight. That's right. Amen. Call on Jesus. Amen. He is the president of heaven in time of trouble. You may be going through a setup that you don't understand, but remember God is custom making your order, and the best is yet to come. I believe we can say spiritually that we feel our hair going. We feel the strength of God coming back. The devil's trying to take us down, but he's alive. Amen. You listen to me screaming tonight, and the devil's trying to take you out. I, I'm telling you, I'm starting the word of God. He's a liar. He's the father of lies. He is the originator of a lie. And the truth is not in him. Amen. He can't tell the truth. That's what the word of God says about this liar that comes against you every day of your life and me in our walk with God. But if you'll trust God tonight, God will make a way. Anybody need to lean on God tonight? Oh, yes. Yes. One songwriter said, I feel the winds of slumber as they try to rock my soul to sleep. One songwriter Betty and mother and brother both that's in heaven now with the Lord. They used to sing the song, I can feel the hand of Satan as he goes before the Father asking me to test me more. The course of the song says, like Job, you know, though God slay me, yet I'll trust him in him. I'll still come forth as God. Hallelujah. Send you faith. You want to pray? The altar's open. If you want to pray there on the stream and just call on God. Text in to Donnie and tell him you pray. And we'll pray with you right now. You can text in and he'll bring it right up here to me. That you're praying. You know, the preacher was, the spirit was talking to me tonight. Got a lot of this in the night. Call him Lee. They should. Did the camp. That's the prayer for her and Kitty. Sandra Park. The Susan Neer. That's the prayer. Pray that God will touch all of them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I've been covered by the I've been covered by the blood ever since my Savior died on Calvary. I have been
and quit falling for everything. Amen. Yeah. Trusted in what he cannot bless. Amen. You think we said for us, Lord? Amen. And then you think we'll be dismissed. Amen. A word of prayer. Amen. Sister Barbara, just leave us the Lord in prayer. Everybody pray with her. Tommy, I'm going to pray with right her. I'm, I got ahead of myself. I'm going to pray with her. Pray together tonight. I'm going to get anything else she's going to say tonight. Amen. Let's just pray together. Father, right now. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead, Thank sister. You. In Jesus' name. Thank God, we believe you, Lord. That you just touch her heart this morning. Bring us through every trial and every setback that the devil sent their way, Lord. And we know that everything will be all right in his hands. In his hands. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.